Hello friends, welcome back to our colorful journey of unit 3 that is optoelectronics. Today we will be discussing about radiative and non-radiative recombination mechanism in semiconductor. Why should we learn this one? In the previous video that is the introduction about optoelectronics, I have shown you so much applications of optoelectronic devices and we have seen how our life is becoming so colorful because of these optoelectronic devices, right? So, from where this light is coming, what is the mechanism behind the devices from which we are getting the light? That means the electrical energy is being converted into light energy. To understand the concept which I am going to discuss today, it is better that you should go through these two videos that is the first video which is on introduction to semiconductor physics and this video are in the playlist coming under applied physics module 2 semiconductor physics that is designed for unit 2 of your syllabus and the fourth video in which I have discussed about the carrier generation and recombination. It will be good if you will go through these two videos before watching this one. If you don't have time, then you can watch it directly. But it is advisable that you should watch these two videos before watching this. First, we will see what is carrier recombination. As I mentioned in the previous video of unit 2, that is carrier generation and recombination, we have seen that in semiconductors there are two types of mechanisms. One is carrier generation and the second one is carrier recombination. In carrier generation what happens? A bond breaks because of which we are getting electron hole pairs. right? And once that electron hole pair is being generated, the electron is moving into the conduction band. Here this is the energy band diagram of a semiconductor and in this we have discussed that there is a small gap between the conduction band and valence band in case of a semiconductor. This is the valence band and this is the conduction band and due to carrier generation when electron hole pairs are being generated by breaking of covalent bonds the electrons they move into the conduction band. Here these blue dots over here, these are the electrons which have moved from the valence band to conduction band. And when they are moving from the valence band to conduction band, what will be left in the valence band? There will be holes in the valence band, these black dots over here. These are the holes because from here the electrons they have moved to the conduction band. When the electrons reach the conduction band, they are now in an excited state. And always the electrons, they try to be in the state of minimum energy. So once they reach an excited state, after some time they will come back to the lower energy state and they will combine with a hole over here. So when these electrons will come back from this conduction band and reach the valence band, they will combine with some of the holes over there and that process is known as recombination. Okay, That means if this electron is coming and combining with these holes over here, they became a Pair. One electron is removed from the conduction band and one hole disappeared from the valence band. So in the process of this recombination, the electrons and holes, they disappear because they are making a pair over here. So the process in which the electrons and holes are eliminated through transition of electron from, from conduction band to valence band. Earlier here there was an electron and in the valence band there was a hole. Now the electron has came from this conduction band to this valence band and 
the electron and holes they combine to rebridge the broken bond that means the electron is eliminated that is removed from the conduction band and hole is removed from the valence band so recombination is the process in which electrons and holes are eliminated and this elimination occurs due to transition of electron here in the conduction band the electron is having a higher energy right and in the valence band the electron is having lower energy if it is tra the transition is occurring from conduction band to valence band the electron is coming from a higher energy state to a lower energy state that means the electron is losing energy because earlier it was at a higher energy state now it came to lower energy state the difference is energy is being lost that may be in the form of light or heat that we will look into so in the process of recombination the electron is moving from conduction band to valence band okay and because of the this recombination the broken bonds they got repaired so the rebridging of ruptured covalent bond takes place during the generation the covalent bonds they breaks that means they ruptured now during this recombination process the broken bonds they are rebridged further this transition that can be direct or indirect about this transitions we have already discussed under semiconductor physics the link of which i have given in the previous slide now in your syllabus it is mentioned that radiative and non radiative recombination what is this radiative and non radiative recombination and what is the difference between these two let us look into that so the carrier recombination it can be either radiative or non radiative further depending on the band structure of a semiconductor we have seen that the semiconductor can be of direct band gap type or indirect band gap type and there is a correlation between these two types of classification here the type of semiconductor that decides whether the carrier recombination will be radiative or non radiative though both types of recombinations occurs in both types of semiconductors but the probability of radiative recombination is very high in case of a direct band gap material and the probability of getting non radiative recombination is very high in case of indirect band gap semiconductors for understanding this we need to plot the graph between the wave vector and energy for that let me first write down the expression for energy in terms of wave vector we all know that the momentum is equals to h bar k here this h bar is the reduced planck's constant and k is our wave vector further in your plus 2 stage also you might have read that e is equals to p square by 2m where this p is the momentum e is energy m is mass so e is equals to p square by 2m and we have the expression for momentum as h bar k so if i substitute h bar k over here then what will be the value of e yes it will be e is equals to h bar square k square by 2m because in the numerator i had p square and p square is nothing but h bar square k square so it is e is equals to h bar square k square by 2m in this expression if you see this h bar this is reduced planck's constant that is h by 2 pi where h is planck's constant so this is a constant and if we are considering electron then mass of electron that is m is also constant then what is the variable on which the value of e depends that is our wave vector k so this h square by 2m this is a constant quantity 
So E is varying with respect to K square. Can you remember a equation Y is equals to AX square? Right, that is the equation for a parabola. Here also the energy varies as K square. This is an approximation. In complicated cases, the equation may be a little more complicated, but we will be considering this simplest one. Now, considering this expression, if we will plot a graph between E and K, but how it will look like? Let us first consider direct band gap material. Here K is the independent variable, so I am taking the wave vector K along the x-axis and E is the dependent variable which changes according to K that E I am taking along y-axis. This is known as EK diagram generally it is called that is the graph between the wave vector K and energy E. So for the valence band we will be getting a graph like this and this is the graph for conduction band and this topmost point here is known as the top of valence band and this is the bottom of the conduction band. In case of a direct band gap material, the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band both occurs for same value of K. And the gap between these two, that is the energy gap Eg. Now, if an electron is there at the conduction band and an hole is there in the valence band, in case of a direct band gap, this is the bottom of the conduction band. And always the transition takes place from here to here. When this electron is losing some energy, that will come back to the valence band and it will recombine with the hole over here. So when this electron is coming over here and recombining with the hole, this extra amount of energy is being released and that is emitted in the form of light. Here H nu is the packet of uh, the quantum of light energy which is known as a photon. So this type of recombination where the bottom of the conduction band and top of the valence band lies at the same value of K. In that case, when the electron is coming from the conduction band to valence band, there is no change in the value of K. Both are in the same position of K or same value of K. These type of recombinations are known as radiative recombination. And we have seen that the momentum is equals to H bar K. If K is not changing during this recombination, that means momentum is also not changing, right? So in case of this radiative recombination, the momentum is conserved. Now coming to the second type, we will be considering an indirect band gap material. Here the wave vector is along x-axis and the corresponding energy is considered along y-axis. Now what is the difference between these two? Here the top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band both occurs at the same value of k. And the difference lies over here. In case of an indirect band gap, this is the top of the valence band and the value of k is over here. Coming to the conduction band, the bottom of the conduction band, it occurs at some other value of k because here the value of k is this value, okay? And the top of the valence band, the value of k is here. So these two are not coming at the same value of k. They are occurring at different value of k. In that case, the material is known as indirect band gap semiconductor. Here the energy gap will be considered between the bottom of the conduction band and top of the valence band. This is the energy gap. Now this is the electron 
which lies at the bottom of the conduction band and this is the hole at the top of the valence band. Now this electron cannot travel like this to this position. For this transition, if this electron is coming over here, after the transition, the value of corresponding k will change. And as this type of transition cannot occur directly, the transition occurs through two different processes. The first one, it will come to some in-between state which is known as a trapping state. And from that state, it will come and combine over here. Or else, it will give its parts of energy to some other electron. Then it will come back over here. Here in this case, what happens whenever this electron is recombining with this hole, the excess energy is emitted in the form of heat. And this type of recombinations are known as non-radiative recombination. Here what we have seen when this electron finally comes to combine with this hole, there is a change in the value of k. If the value of k is changing, that means p is also changing because p is equals to h bar k. That means the momentum is not conserved in this case. So in case of non-radiative recombination, momentum is not conserved. Can you tell me which one is of our interest now? Because we are going to deal with optoelectronic devices that means we need light energy and here the energy is emitted in the form of light so we are interested with the semiconductors having this direct band cap in which the radiative recombination is more probable within that semiconductor now let us summarize with a comparison between this radiative and non-radiative recombination in case of radiative recombination, the electrons in conduction band recombines with hole in valence band and the excess energy is released in the form of light that is photon. Okay? But in case of non-radiative recombination, when the electron combines with the hole in the valence band, the excess energy is released in the form of phonon that may be in the form of heat or crystal vibration. The radiative recombination occurs through direct recombination, but the non-radiative recombination, it occurs through trapping or agar recombination. These two I have already discussed in the fourth video of semiconductor physics. Further, this radiative recombination is more probable in case of direct band gap semiconductors and non-radiative recombination is more probable in case of indirect band gap semiconductor. For radiative recombination, the momentum is conserved and the momentum is not conserved for non-radiative recombination. The semiconductors which are giving this radiative recombinations, those are more suitable for optoelectronic devices and this is not suitable for optoelectronic devices. Today we will stop here. In the next class, we will start with the most interesting optoelectronic device that is light emitting diode. Thank you all. If you like the content of the video, please press the like button and share the link with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel to get the notification whenever I am uploading a video. Thank you all.